Welcome crafters to my channel Lisa Horton Crafts. Today we are going to be looking at a fusion between Lisa Horton and Spellbinders. As many of you know we have had our first release for Spellbinders and we are working on our second at the moment and I thought it'd be quite nice to come in and give you a little bit of inspiration about how we can mix Lisa products and Spellwinder products together and create something super pretty. Now, I don't always create cards start to finish. I do like to show you techniques. And today I want to show you just a little way of using your interference inks, your vellum and your anemone from Spellbinders and Lisa Horton. Now, interference inks are just a delight to work with. And there are other videos out there talking about them, but I will go through briefly how they work and what they do. But when you pop them with vellum, they are an absolute delight. So this is my vellum. This is a 200 GSM. It's a very thick vellum, which was designed actually because it works beautifully in our embossing folders. And it doesn't crack. It just gives that beautiful white worked look. But we'll do another video on that another time. But today I want to show you how beautifully these cut with the Spellbinders dies and then inked using our interference inks. So let's start with moving all these inks to one side for now, and let me show you our vellum. So first things first, you get 24 sheets, you get six colors and it's 200 GSM. And when I open this up, you'll see at the back here, we have a kind of peachy tone. We have our, um, it's like a, peppermint green I would call it then we have our sky blue let me lift that up and you can see it's very very pretty blue we have our lemon we have our pink as you can see it's been used and then of course at the front we have the white so you actually get six um six fours are 24 so you get your six colors and four sheets of each of those now you get white pink lemon sky peach and apple they all come in this lovely binder as well and i say a binder it's like um, a cover so it's a nice wrap you can store it beautifully on your shelves like so it's a4 in size and it is just a delight to work with so that's that i have got a piece of the white here i actually might hmm, Let's see if we can bring in a piece of maybe what would look quite nice with the white. I'm thinking maybe we mix the colours up a little bit. Let's bring in a little bit of the pink. I think I've got, I saw one there, didn't I, that was already, there we are. We'll use a piece of that. We'll bring in the yellow, the lemon, just in case. Who knows? Let's see where it leads us. And I will move the rest of the vellum to one side. Now, what I would say to you is just remember that vellum is quite a kind of a sturdy material it doesn't like to bend too much but it does like die cutting I mean some vellums do um, mine certainly does so we're going to start with the white so let's push those to one side let's move our vellum to one side let's open up our dies this is a very well loved die this anemone and I will do one with the other die we have in our collection which is the iris which is absolutely beautiful and that works very, very well with our explosion powders. So we'll do we'll do quite a few demos and videos on the on the release that we've um, just completed with Spellbinders, so you can get an idea of different things you can do. Now, you'll see mine has got tape on it. Now this is because I like to do batch making, and I pop these in my die cutting machine, and I literally take them out like so. And then I put another piece of card in, another piece of card in, and I keep doing this until I've, I've got as many as I want. So we're going to do that today. We don't need the leaves, but we do need our little stamens. So let's leave our leaves on the packaging. Let's take this and this and move this to one side. They are very, very self-explanatory. You don't have to worry about how to put these together either. They are going to be really easy to work with. So I've popped on my desk my Platinum 6. Now, this is the old Platinum, which has got the old plates in it. This isn't the plates that are uh, that have the adapter plate with them, if you're embossing folders. But this is the one that's in my studio all the time. And I have my newer machine, which I use when I go to TV for shows and, and, and other, other reasons. So this is fine because all we're going to be doing is die cutting. It's a little squeaky, 
but it's very well loved. So what I'm going to do is pop uh, the top plate to one side. We're going to bring in that white vellum and we could probably bring in two sheets, but I am going to do one at a time. And we're going to add our four dies like so because they're already taped together and make sure they fit on the plate perfectly because it's clear and you don't want to end up uh, going over the edge and not realizing it. But there we are. Run that through. And then we will do this a couple of times and then we'll change up the colors as well. So you can see how gorgeous they look. <laughs> I didn't want to talk while I was running that through. How gorgeous they look when they are layered with different colors of vellum. So let's lift this off. While I'm here, I am going to bring in my Ultimate 2, so bear with me. And on the top of my Ultimate 2, I do have my tacky mat. The tacky mat is, as it suggests, it is a tacky surface and it's great for, for all your inking. Let me just show you one in a package. That's your tacky mat. So it's nine and a half by nine inches. It's really lovely and thick. It's photopolymer and it holds all of your dies down beautifully or your die cuts. So let me pop that just like so for a second and we will lift these pieces out. So I'm gonna take them all and I'm gonna pop them onto my tacky mat. Okay, there we go. And it's nice because they're gonna just sit there beautifully. Now also, you can't see it very well, but here are all the centers. Now I've made sure that I've got short nails so I can pick these up. If not, I'd use a pair of tweezers or something like that. Now make sure you can see these pieces because you've got their white on white. So there's those two pieces as well. So I'm going to repeat that and I'm going to do it in a few different colours and then I'll be back to you. So whilst I had the opportunity of cutting all of this, I decided to cut one of the other Spellbinders dies in my collection, which is the stitched edge circle background. And I took the outside cutting edge which is the large one here and then the inner edge here. And I cut them together and created a little frame. Now that's going to sit as a beautiful wreath for us. So we can ink that into different colors if we want to and turn that into a little wreath. So we're going to put that to one side for a moment because we're not going to be using that just now. And also I am going to put these dies away because we don't need them anymore. We've used the set of four and we use the centers as well. And they are going to be the mainstay of our card, to be fair. There's not really anything else that we're going to need other than some plain cardstock and also our ink pads and some great blending brushes. So where do we start? Now, you can see I've got my tacky mat here. Now, the tacky mat you can use on your desk. You don't have to use it inside the Ultimate. Um, I use it because this is my workstation. Now, the tacky mat is literally what it says it's tacky. It is a really thick piece of photopolymer and it stops your card from moving. So if I move this here, it's not moving, but it isn't tacky to the touch, but it is tacky. And it kind of tacks your elements down. So what I've done is I've cut them all twice and I've cut them in different colours. Now, remember, one thing about the interference ink pads is they are a dye and a pigment mix. So you may find that sometimes your tacky mat will get stained. Um, I don't have a problem with that. If you do have a problem with that, then I probably wouldn't do it on your tacky mat. I would probably do it on a piece of cardstock. So to be honest with you, I really like the look it gives you when you use the interference ink. So, you know, whatever you find the best for you, just, just go with it. I just think these are such pretty, pretty flowers and they're a great way of using up small scraps of card as well. They just are definitely stash busters or scrap busters, I'd like to say. Now we've got all of these elements. So you get small and large of everything and I've cut everything twice. So we've got the small ones up here. Make sure you keep them together so you can see where they wrap over each other or kind of interlock, okay? So make sure that you have got your same flower together and you haven't got you haven't, you haven't got two rights or two lefts. So let's start with some of our pretty colors. Now I think we'll start with the white 
and we'll start with the brush that we can use uh, in the center. And I wanna use a pink in the center. So you'll see from the ink pads that they have two colors on the top of them. Now the beauty of these is that when you pop them onto black and white cardstock, they do different things. So for example, let me grab a sample I already have. So these are samples that I've done already. So this is white cardstock, excuse the pieces of paper, but it's worth showing you. Um, so let's look here. So white cardstock, you'll get the orange with a right mango here, and then on the black cardstock, you'll get the green. So you can see the color changes when you use it on black and white cardstock. So also we've got um, different colors in the collection. So you've got the blue and the purple, which change colors, so you've got the blue here and the purple here and then the yellow and the pink and then the gray and the gold and then the purple and the green so you've got lots of different options and they work beautifully with things like your better press so if i show you these you can see that when you add the color sorry i've got not very good lighting in here today because the weather has been dreadful so you've got your better press plate or you can do your um, stenciling, changing up the colours, or you can do it on white cardstock and still get some beautiful, beautiful results. Yeah, so you've got lots and lots of choices with these inks. They do an awful lot of things. So let's get cracking. And as I say, two different colours with the same ink pad. When you open your ink pad, it will always be what it is on the left hand side on the top and that's the color brush you need. So you know you need the color brush of the color of the ink pad, okay? Not the color you think it's going to be. So we're gonna take our ink here, and I'm going to literally go around the edge of these flowers, just really, really simply. And actually, I don't need to hold down too much because they are sitting gray on that uh, tacky mat. Now, vellum, um, may well move a little bit because it's a different surface but it, it's way better than it would be if you were trying to do this just on a piece of card it will be going everywhere so i'm going to do the small ones first uh, um the white ones first and we're going to now do the small and um, we're just going to go around the edge and we're just going to use that pink this one's called tropical paradise tropical paradise shimmer they're all beautiful. You cannot pick a bad color. There is no bad colors in these. Now that looks quite dark there, but you wait and see the difference. So I'm absolutely gonna use the same color ink pad and I'm gonna use it on the yellow. But what I think I'll do this time is I will just pop it in the middle. So we'll do a different look and we'll have the color there. And we'll do it here again, just like so. And then we'll do over here, which is the other larger one. Don't get confused with these. And we'll do this one as well. Excuse me, leaning over like this, but it just makes it easier for me to, to do it. And then just here, we're gonna come with that pink again, like so. So straight away, you've got some random looking flowers. Don't worry about what they look like at this stage. You really don't need to. Now we're gonna come in with our lemon candy shimmer. Now we know left hand side is white card, so we know we're gonna need a yellow brush. And then what we'll do is we'll come back in and we'll come into the center here of each flower. Now what is magical about these ink pads is that when they hit the pink, they will blend. So you then get um, like an orange shimmer. So you've got pink around the edge, yellow in the middle and orange as a little gradient. And when I pick these up, you're gonna see how that how cool they look. So we're gonna leave those like so. I mean, we could if we wanted to, let's try actually, let's do it on this one. Let's keep with the yellow and put a little light bit of yellow just around the edge. You don't have to do this. I'm just giving you other options to show you how they blend beautifully. And then we'll pop, I've not even added any more ink onto this. I don't need to. I'm only, I'm only giving kind of a little bit of a, uh, almost like an ombre on this one. So you can see that they're a little bit more delicate than these. However, wait till you see the end result. They're gonna look absolutely gorgeous. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring in the ripe mango. Now you think that's a yellow as well. 
Well, it kind of is, but it's a warmer orangey yellow. So what we can do now is add to our little, let me get a, let me see what I could use to show you. Let's grab a little paintbrush. And I'm gonna show you these two tiny pieces here, okay? So these two is what we want darker. And then we can literally pop ink onto these like so and then we can leave those lighter if we want to i'm going to leave them for now because i might come back to a different yellow in a minute actually no should we do a different yellow yeah let's do a different yellow let's come in with that lemon candy again clean this off and i'm just going to use a piece of scrap tissue which i've been using for all of my wiping off so wipe off the orangey yellow and you'll see there's still loads of color on there wipe that off and just come in with that pretty yellow and do that on the two larger pieces, okay? So they look a different yellow to these two. So now, wait till they all go together, they are gonna be stunning. So now we can do something else. We can leave them as vellum and we can mix and match those and we'll put those together as is. But now down here, I think we're gonna change up the colors. So let's put the lid back on here and let's go with, um, peacock tails. So we're going to have a blue this time because you can see as we're on white card, you're going to get the blue color. So let's bring in a blue brush and we will bring in a little bit of this peacock tails. Now I think this is quite a heavy color, so I might actually see how much ink I've got in there. Yeah, quite a lot. So I've tapped off some and I'm going to literally go around the edges really lightly and change the color of that white vellum this is going to give us kind of i want to say not a corn flowery look but it's going to give us a a pretty pretty flower and then i'm going to come to the smaller one and actually the bigger one let's pick one leaf let's pick the leaf that goes underneath and go a little bit heavier i'm just going to see because it might help you see the shimmer better and then we'll do the same with the smaller one we'll have heavier on the base petal on the top petal okay so i'm not going to add any more ink actually let's go a little bit lighter on the top petal you see that these two are darker and these two are lighter and we'll leave it as is now for this one let's try something completely different let's see if i have or should we go lavender let's go lavender so lavender and blue would look quite nice together so this is our lavender fields and it's obviously a beautiful purple. And we'll do the same thing. We will make sure, we've, see, we've got two large ones there actually. So we need to swap these over. Make sure you've got a mixture of small and large. So I'm gonna go with the base layer and I'm gonna go heavy on the purple. And actually, because we've got pink underneath, it makes the pink just really dark. It's very, very pretty color actually when I hold this one up. You're going to love this one and then we're going to come here and right in the middle here so they're actually a little bit darker because what we'll do now is we can treat them like any ink pad we can absolutely add more color so we're going to bring in the mermaid lagoon which although it's a greeny color it's going to be gorgeous when we mix i'm just trying to find a brush that's a good brush I'm going to take off a lot of the color and this one because it's got like um, a green and a blue no green and a purple i'm going to see how it interacts yes with the color that's already there so that's going to mix beautifully oh that's pretty it's going to be very pretty as well okay so now we need to do our centers so these ones i think would look really cool with a pink center so I remembered that my Tropical Paradise is gonna have that beautiful pink. So we can now come in with heavier on these pieces and we will go these ones here and these ones, we might have a blue on these. Let's put a blue on those. We need to add um, different colors here. So move that one there. So they're centers for, let me swap those over. I think they're going to be centers for these two. Now these two, I'm going to give yellow centers. So let me be much lighter and then 
this one actually let's go with the pink and i think to make these a little bit darker we could add a little bit of that blue so it adds a little bit of the peacock tails just on just to make those a little bit darker so we bring in our lovely yellow brush for our lemon candy and then on these ones here we'll have the ripe mango because i know that is a little bit of a darker yellow okay so we'll come in with our ripe mango on those smaller ones here just like so so as you can see now we've colored everything now all you're seeing at the moment is colors and they do look pretty they do look really pretty but you've also got these on this kind of greeny base which doesn't do it any favors at all so what we're going to do is we're going to make up these flowers and then we're going to come to this so first things first is we're going to put the glue on the flowers on the petals now remember this is a shimmery ink and it is a non-porous surface so these are going to take a little longer to dry than even when you've got a, a glue pad that is swift drying let's get all of these done so that's the larger of the two i always say the larger of the two has got the larger petal at the top and then i pop the smaller of the two over that way and then we're going to do the same with all of them so i'm going to zip through this and speed this piece up and then i'll come back when all of these are put together So I'm going to grab a piece of white card now, pop some of these onto the card here. Now these ones I've got here, they have been glued, but they don't have a center. Just You could use solid pieces if you wanted to, um, but I was just thinking it would be really nice to have pretty um, delicate centers like we've got on the other ones as well. And let's pop that on here pop that one on there so that changes the color of that a little bit um, and a small one here I think we'll do a yellow one down here but I'm not going to put the double layers on these ones I don't think I'm just going to keep them single layer centers without adding that extra piece and then we want a big cream one up the top here and actually if you give it a wiggle it should be fine so now we've got all these beautiful flowers got such a pretty shimmer to them there we are and I'll show you another color this one's quite pretty as well and you can change all your colors up to be absolutely beautiful or you can keep them very plain like they are here and they're beautifully and delicate here as well so you can you can use them in very many different ways this one is a gorgeous one as well with the purples and the blues you can see the light catching that one just this one as well let me just show you this one too and then that's the blue and it's got the pretty shimmer to it as well and then all we're going to do is we are going to take our uh, wreath and we'll bring in um greeny let's bring in a blue and a yellow because that will fix the problem doesn't matter if i'm covering those for now so let's take our ink off here let's come in with that yellow and we're going to go all the way around the edge and what will happen is it's going to give that lovely shimmer but we are then going to take the blue and go over the top because blue and yellow make green so it will still work in the same way as any of your ink pads let's bring the blue in and you'll see as I do this now, it now creates a beautiful green frame and I'll hold it up again in a minute. It's very difficult to see while it's on the ultimate and on that tacky mat. Okay, and then I'll lift this up and show you. You can now see we've got our gorgeous green frame and all you're gonna do is you are gonna take a card blank and we're gonna pop this in the middle of our card and we're going to add all of our beautiful detail. So what I will do is I will add some glue in random places where I know I'm going to end up covering. And I'll pop that down like so. That's going to sit beautifully. I've, my ink is still wet, so I've got a little bit of ink in places. So try and make sure your ink is dry first. And then you can build your wreath. So here are the flowers all glued on. They 
need to settle a little bit and we need to like lift the petals a little bit but it's a good idea and it's a good start on how to make the beginnings of a card so once this has dried i will add uh, all the details to it and we can finish it off with the sentiment in the middle I think we might use our smile. Let's see how large the smile die is to see if this works. It would be quite nice if it fit. And actually, I think that might sit beautifully behind. So let's take the, yeah, let's do that. And then we'll do the matte and layer that sits with it as well. So we'll get our die cutting machine, but we will use um, not a piece of vellum. We will absolutely use something that is going to be um, a little bit more kind of you can read it better so this is pretty to sit in the background so let's move that to one side and get the dies cut so let's glue let's glue this to the back and the the, the reason I like to put a, a thicker matte layer behind is that I can get my foam pads on a lot easier so let's get the tweezers again now the glue dries clear so if you have glue that pops out around the sides don't worry about that because this glue will dry clear. This is my high tack glue and it literally bonds in seconds. So it sticks really well. And then I will put some foam pads on the back, but I'm going to have to be a little bit careful because we need to cut them down. I'm going to use about that amount, no more, so we can put the rest of that away. And I will cut these into little strips and then I can size them where I want them to be. So I can size that one approximately there. I always, there's always one side that's trickier to get off than the other. And I always take the tricky side off first because then that means when I go to remove the other side, it doesn't kind of damage my card when I'm trying to peel that backing off. And now I won't bore you with peeling the pieces off, but I'm gonna peel the pieces off in a second and pop it down. Right, and I'm gonna do so leave that like that for a second so I know where that roughly is. And we have these dies here as well. So these are dies that cut out the sentiments. So this is one stamp. You stamp the whole thing and then you die cut like so. You die cut them all out. How cool is that? So we're going to pop that on there and it's going to seem tricky to do that, but it won't be. So we'll pop that like so. That will sit down like that. Like that. And it doesn't matter. These will still lift beautifully, but we do need to hide them just a little bit. But that's fine. So we'll put smile there and we'll take all these bits off. But as I said, I won't bore with you with that. I will um, do these pieces and come back to you. So let's pop this under here like so. So smile. OK, it sits nicely. I don't mind that one peeking over. And now these are drying. I'll be able to fluff these up a little bit in a minute. I love it when they kind of have a little bit of dimension, just like so. And because they're vellum, they bend really easily. Very, very easy. That looks a little bit better. So that's super pretty now. And then we've got smile, my dear friend. Yeah, we'll pop it down there. And again, we're going to pop the foam pads on the back, but I've already cut a strip so we can trim that down. Like this, smile, my dear friend. Now, it's really hard to see this and I'm going to clear my desk and then I'm going to show you a little bit closer up how pretty it looks. So there's the result. It's very hard to pick up on camera, but you can see, hopefully, it's super pretty. It's got such pretty, pretty colours in it. It's using the vellum from Lisa Horton Crafts. It's using Lisa Horton Crafts interference inks, and we've teamed that up with the wonderful layered anemone from Lisa Horton and Spellbinders, and the My Dear Friend sentiment from the Hello set, and the smile from obviously the smile set. So why don't you give this a go? It's something a little bit different. It hasn't used any of the stems. It's just used all of those gorgeous, gorgeous florals teamed up with some inks and a little bit of plain white card. And you can do all sorts of magical things.